previously on Cooking Without a Full Pantry. There are a few things that can make you as miserable as, as having a cold. I think it's time to whip up some chicken soup. With these two things, we've got almost all of the ingredients to make a perfect chicken stock. We're going to be using our instant pot. Collagen, collagen, flavor, flavor, flavoring, flavor, flavored, flavor, 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 collagen. Here it is, a beautiful chicken stock. Hi, welcome to Cooking Without a Full Pantry, and uh, welcome back to part two of Chicken Soup. We are uh, going to be making the soup today. Uh, last time we made the stock using some leftover bones and some vegetable scraps and uh, our Instant Pot. Today we are going to be um, making the actual soup. So uh, first step is we're going to get the chicken stock out of the fridge get that going. Uh, like we said last time, the Instant Pot does a great job of helping the bones break down the, uh, the collagen and get a nice stock going. It doesn't do a great job of reducing the soup, so we're going to get it into the pot, get it uh, simmering, and let it reduce while we are doing the rest of the work. Okay, here's our beautiful chicken stock from last night. I'm just going to carefully Get this poured into our big pot. Let's get this going. I'm gonna put that on high until it starts to bubble, and then we'll turn the heat down, and uh, it'll continue to simmer while we prepare our vegetables and noodles and chicken. In our chicken soup, we're gonna be uh, doing a real basic recipe. We're gonna be using just very few ingredients, and we're gonna do it in three main stages. First stage, we add the vegetables into the stock, the main vegetables that need some time to cook in the stock. That's gonna be the carrots and uh, celery and onions. And stage two is gonna be the chicken. We're gonna cook that in a pan first, along with the garlic, and then we're gonna add that to the stock. The Third stage is gonna be the noodles. We're gonna try making our own egg noodles this time. I've never made egg noodles before. We're gonna see how that goes, but we wanna add that last because we don't want those to overcook in the stock. We want those to still be nice and fresh and springy, especially if you make them homemade. So here's our basic ingredients right here. We got uh, the carrots. This is the time for the carrots. We got celery and we got uh, half an onion. Um, we're gonna chop all these up, we'll add them to the stock. And later on, there's garlic, we're gonna cook that with the chicken, and then the parsley, that's gonna go in at the same time as the chicken. And so to chop all this up, uh, I'll normally just chop it with a knife here, but I've got uh, a special trick here that I learned from binge watching all the episodes of Man vs. Wild from Bear Grylls. Well, we're just gonna try this flint and steel thing here, and here we go. All right, and uh, there we go, perfectly chopped. All right, so now grab a knife here and just transport these to the bowl. They're all gonna go in together into the stock to simmer. So here's our stock. We're gonna add the vegetables now, just get them in there. Now for the chicken. Okay, we're gonna add in about maybe a clove of garlic, a hot oil. Now normally you wouldn't wanna cook this much chicken in this size of a pan, it's a little bit too small. But all we're doing here is getting a basic brown on the outside of the chicken before we put it into the stock to do the rest of the cooking. 
While the chicken's browning, we'll chop up the parsley, because that'll go into the soup along with the chicken. And this part you can save uh, in your vegetable scraps to be used in a stock later on. So yeah, owning up to a mistake right here. Um, definitely use too small of a pan to do this job. You use too small of a pan, the meat's all crowded together. The meat is all too crowded for the steam to escape efficiently. So all it's doing in here is actually steaming the meat, uh, rather than giving it the sear it needs. The steam is getting in the way of the heat required uh, to sear. It's gonna cook, it's gonna be fine, it's got a little bit of browning on, especially once the water content reduces here. Oh well, it's still gonna taste fine, it's still gonna, it's just not gonna have that browning that I was looking for. So, after it got some of the water to boil out of there, it did manage to get some browning going on with the chicken, so I think we're all good there. Now it goes into the stock. And once again, that is flavor. A little water goes in there, we scrape it off, that's gonna go into the stock too. And then the parsley. Also, now is the time that we're going to want to season our soup. So I am going to do about a tablespoon of salt. Now remember, this is going to depend on how much you seasoned your stock. If you made the stock yourself, if you seasoned it quite a bit, lay off on the seasonings at this point. If you went light on the seasonings like I did, then you can season it as you wish. About a teaspoon black pepper. That's all I'm gonna go with. Very basic recipe. You can add anything you'd like, whatever you'd like at this point. I'm just gonna give this a stir. Okay, stage three, egg noodles. Time to make the noodles. Now, um, egg noodles are a little bit different than regular pasta noodles. They, are, they have a firmer, springier texture to them, and that comes uh, from using bread flour. Uh, bread flour has a higher content of protein, specifically gluten, and that is what makes it hold up together a little bit firmer, springier. We don't have bread flour. Um, you can buy the gluten in the store just to add to the flour to make your own bread flour, uh, but I, of course, don't have any of that. So. We need to think, what can we use instead of gluten? What will make a reasonable facsimile of bread flour? Hmm. 